Wow, long time no see. I'm back. <laughs> But the reason why I am back on my YouTube channel again, my main one, is because I've got something to share. And I do apologise if you hear some noise in the background, um, it's the radiator and we've had a bit of an exciting week because <laughs> we didn't have any hot water, but we got there, we just got there. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about, well actually, I'm going to be talking about a story time video because I recently experienced the worst possible situation I have ever been through and even though there are circumstances that can't be fixed, I want to really show my disappointment as an autistic person and I know that part of that was a little bit of my responsibi responsibility because I could do something a bit better but I thought instead of that I'll just put it out there just for the sake of getting my voice heard. The story time is about the worst flight I have ever ever had and as an autistic person there are situations that can be super awkward and flying an aeroplane is one of them and I don't usually travel on an aeroplane as much but this was an exception because I was going on a holiday to Belfast and that happened a few weeks ago and I did plan for the trip but unfortunately, it didn't really go according to plan. Basically, it started when I was at the airport. Now, I took a flight with, a, with my friend. Um, we took a flight, an aeroplane, at London Gatwick, but the company we used to fly with was EasyJet. And EasyJet's usually the local aeroplane company that we use if you are traveling to other places within the British Isles and that was no exception for London to Belfast and usually London to Belfast it only takes an hour sometimes an hour and 15 minutes but usually an hour and even though it feels like it's a bit of a bumpy flight it should have been an easier flight but turns out it wasn't and this is the reason why. It all started when we were at the airport. My friend and I, we went through customs and everything was okay because we made sure to leave early and we managed to do that with success, no problem. We went to the lounge when everything was ready and we were just waiting with a whole group of people. There were, there was such a huge crowd of people that day and it was probably around about six o'clock uh, in the evening at that time and we were just all waiting at the waiting lounge and the plane didn't take off and my friend and I thought okay what what was the reason why and it turned out that there was an elderly passenger who fainted during the flight and that was from Belfast to London and to be honest I completely understand that because there are emergency situations when passengers have medical issues and they need extra help so uh, that was completely understandable that did delay us by extra half an hour but like I said before, it was okay because I completely understand. And we didn't take off until after seven. Now, I want to bear in mind that I've got this with me and I should have worn it on my flight. But if for those who don't know, this is a sunflower lanyard. And even though I had this for a long time, I don't usually wear it. But on that aeroplane, I wish I did. This is the reason why I do re regret it because what should have been an easy flight turned out to be a really, really difficult one. And even though no one knew I was autistic, I, I thought, okay, it, what difference is it going to make? And normally I don't wear things like that because my friend is also m one of my carers. So if I was with a carer I would be completely fine. So we took off 
and it would have been like an easier flight and then suddenly we heard from the pilot we're gonna have to make an emergency landing because the system there was something wrong with it and I thought oh okay is there something a bit wrong and I got a bit panicky about it because I never been in that situation before and I had a bit of like like oh oh what, what's going on because sometimes I'm all right but this was one of those few rare occasions that I'm not used to spanner in the works or change and I got so panicky and almost upset about that but my friend was like don't worry everything's gonna be fine and I just th thought uh, that's not helping but um I I don't mean it in a horrible way but I I just think okay I'm trying to remain calm but this is definitely not working out at the moment so we had to make an emergency landing but at the ROM airport so Belfast has two airports but the two airports are 10 minutes from each other when you fly, fly from one way to the other. Instead of going to the one we were originally going to land to which was Belfast City Airport we actually had to make a landing to Belfast International Airport and we had to wait by an extra half an hour and and we just thought okay that's fine but there were people that started to get a little bit fidgety and not really happy but we would just try to relax a little bit and this was where the biggest biggest situation happened and it was one that I really really struggled with and if you ever wondered how much I got into a meltdown I was this close this close to having a meltdown and it's not a usual thing to happen to me but it was like this close and I, even though I didn't wear my sunflower lanyard it was such an awkward situation even my friend was getting really really tired and a bit moody and I, I wanted to say something like can we ask people or can we do this duh, 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 duh. but it was so awkward I just had to like not say anything and I tried to mask my emotions which I do regret but it's just one of those things that it does happen and there's nothing you can really do about it so when the time came for takeoff because apparently there was something wrong with the wings of the airplane and there was something wrong with the engine control system because city airport didn't have the engineers only the international airport did and I just thought okay that's fine and we were about to take off there was a mutiny on board 12 people decided to leave the airplane because they thought okay we've had enough and they actually stepped off the airplane and we had to wait an extra hour or almost hour and a half because the crew had to do a series of security checks which was part of the policy and loads of people were a bit angry they were like oh it's 10 minutes long duh, duh, duh. you should have stayed and a lot of people got really peed off about it so it was it was kind of another awkward situation and I was getting in a panicky sort of stage and I didn't really say anything but apparently we had to um move from our seats to one point really because the security checks as part of easyjet's policy they have to run a series through security checks for safety reasons and also they had to sort bits out but there was one point where the captain well there was one point where the pilot actually said if you get off we we have to say your bags cannot stay at the international airport. They have to go to our destination and you have to make your own way to get your luggage there. And people weren't too happy about that. And there were some people who really wanted to stay, but then a lot of people wanted to get off. But the security checks, 
they lasted about nearly an hour and a half and the poor crew i felt so sorry for them because they didn't want people to go and run through the security checks they wanted to take off as much as the passengers did and i didn't really blame them so even though i was close to a meltdown i remained calm and i said to one of them i don't blame you and i know you're doing everything that you can so i i know that uh, that people will get annoyed but you're doing such a good job so thank you so much but when I got back to my seat I thought okay it will be like fine and by the time we all sat down it was half nine and um, when we got to that um, base, we had to go through um, the safety instructions again, like how to use like a life jacket, what to do in an emergency situation. And then the crew members sat down. But as we were about to take off, as we were about to take off, the aeroplane decided to do a slight taxi U-turn. And I thought, oh, I think this is what it is. And I went, oh you are kidding me i was really angry by that point and it turned out the plane had to do a u taxi turn to get back into the place where we originally landed before and the reason why was because city airport was closed because it's a small airport they don't open longer like international airport do and the time that they closed was at 9 30 and we were about 15 minutes in after the city airport closed so 15 minutes later quarter to 10 just because um as we were about to land off we had the, the new information and we had to divert the plan and the pilot was so confused and disappointed he said i'm so sorry i know we've done everything that we can but i'm going to check to see what's going on but in the meantime have complimentary snacks on us which i thought was so kind of them and we were all had to get off and everyone was a bit angry but I would never forget, I would never forget the look of sadness and disappointment on the faces of the crew members because they felt that they let the passengers down, the pilot was frustrated and upset and he said I'm sorry for letting you down and you could just see the frustration and the upset in the pilot's voice and the sadness in the crew members voice as well and I just think, I mean I know you've done everything you could but that was that was no excuse for EasyJet to do something like that and I just think that was that was I wouldn't say anything so bad but I just think it, it was just so disappointed that they had to be in the spanner in the work situation and there was nothing that they can do and because of that we all had to get off on the aeroplane to go on a train shuttle to go to the main entrance at the international airport to pick up our bags and to make our own way out to our destination because when we got out of the international airport there was nobody to help us no member of staff no security people it was all quiet there was a long queue of people from the outside where the taxis were all the way back into the entrance and it took such a long time because even though there were taxis there was a big, big, a big line of them from the entrance to there. And then also there was a bit of a, little bit of a, a circle where the other taxis would actually collect passengers, uh, would collect people. And um, we thought that the taxis were supposed to collect us at the little circle thing um, to take us to our final destination. But then there were so many taxis that missed us and it, it was so so really difficult because no one told the taxi drivers as well what was going on and then also there were many buses um to take people from the airport to the little uh, station where people could get picked up and i thought surely surely as like a complimentary thing why didn't they go out to our destinations to help us that would have been really really kind of them to do that and me and my friend we were waiting outside the cold for 45 minutes 
45 minutes, probably nearly an hour, just waiting what's going on. But luckily there was a lady who was with us and we'd all decided to get an Uber, even though it cost about 40 pound to get from International Airport to the city centre. We just thought, okay, we've all had enough. We have to go. And, um, that we were me and my friend we were worried about the hotel closing because it had like strict times of when it would close and open because it had curfew hours and we were panicking and we were worried about going to another hotel nearby and just to do a bit of a swap until we get uh, back to our own one or change hotels completely but luckily that wasn't the case and mum and dad really helped us out my mum and dad basically and the hotel stuff was so lovely and they said that there were loads of people who were having the same situation not just on our plane but through other different airplanes as well so they decided to open extra hours until 3 a.m to help us to make sure that we get into the hotel at that time which i thought was so kind of them and that hotel was premier in so to so everyone in Premier Inn, Titanic Belfast Hotel, thank you so much. You really were very kind to me and my friend and also to other people who were staying as well. So a massive, massive thank you to them. And then once that happened, we got the Uber, which was luckily three minutes away from the airport. And then we sat down in the taxi in a warm setting finally and then we traveled to um belfast center and then there was a lady who had to stop at a hotel but she jumped out first and even though we had to pay 40 pounds each she said it's all on me really i'm happy to pay um for the two of you as well as me and i'll include that on the expenses to easyjet and i thought that was so sweet of her but i'm so gutted that i can't well i didn't really know her name so if i did know her name i would have really thanked her in this video because she was so kind to us as well so to the lady who actually did that thank you so much that was so sweet and then we made it to the titanic belfast hotel and by the time we got there it was nearly midnight luckily our return flight a few days later was no problem at all and when me, my parents and my friend were talking about it, we thought, okay, we can try and cl uh, claim our expenses back on EasyJet. My friend looked into the policy because she paid for the airline tickets. It turns out was that on their policy, I can't remember what their policy of it was, but I need to look it up. As part of their policy, if any situation like that happened, we can't get our money back or have any compensation. And I am so angry at that because because that's not the way to treat passengers like that and I don't know what happened to the pilot and the crew but I have a feeling that something did happen but not in a good way but I really really do not know and I would I just have to say I am so so disappointed in EasyJet and their service and I, I just think it's so so awful by the way how the pilot and the passengers were treated as well as the crew and since I was a passenger who is autistic I felt like even though the crew members did their best and I don't blame them or the pilot I felt like EasyJet have let me down because there was no way I could have handled a situation like that. Even if it was a bit longer with three hours, I would have had a proper meltdown and I wouldn't have been able to take it anymore. So I just think I'm really disappointed in them. And bear in mind, I will tag EasyJet because I really want to get my voice heard out there. And I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be using their services again, probably not, but I just really wanted to share my point of view and across out there because I'm really disappointed and it's not good enough and I felt like not only as an autistic passenger but with a few others as well, we were really let down. But then, but to lighten up it a little bit actually, <laughs> Everyone in Belfast a few days later asked us when we were fat, when they learned that we were travelling from London, did you have any problems? And me and my friend were like, oh yeah, big problems. And they said, yeah, it was the president. 
and I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> so, it's, I know it's not Joe Biden's fault, because he's excluded from like this, really, but EasyJet never told the, the thing, because I don't know what their policy was again, or I need to look it up, but if I do find it, I will leave it in the description box down below, but if I don't, then hopefully I will get an explanation to this. But it's just so, so disappointed that we're not going to get any money back because of that incident. And yeah, I think things should have been handled so differently. And I think if I was to choose them again, if I had a choice, I probably won't use EasyJet services ever again, to be honest, unless I get a full apology. That's why I'm making my point across, just because I felt like as an autistic person and a passenger, it wasn't really dealt with and I was struggling a little bit really and even though I didn't wear my sunflower lanyard at all and there was a situation where I wish I did, it's still not good enough. And I just gonna have to say it's, it was really, really bad. Hopefully I will never be in a situation like this again but you can't really predict those things.